What is going on, free folk, and welcome back to our watch party of House of the Dragon. Today we are watching episode 8. I have my bucket of popcorn, and I have my water. Stay hydrated. If you're not familiar with how we do watch parties, I stream them, and what happens over here is this is where I am in the episode, so if I'm 55 minutes into the episode, it will say 55, and I will give you a countdown from 10 you will hear 10 beeps and on youtube right here will be the beginning of the episode i cannot show you the episode obviously so i give you uh the first uh 10 15 seconds of the episode to synchronize to help you synchronize with with uh with me and you'll if you don't know what how to do it you'll it, it's pretty easy to pick up you'll see what's going to happen so i'm going to give you a countdown from 10 10 beeps we're going to click play and we're synchronizing on the boah of the HBO. So without further ado, let's get started. Let me switch over to HBO. For me, bam, I am on HBO. A bam. Here we go. And for you guys, I'm going to start the count countdown. So here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, play. One. There it is, the theme song. I'm a bucket. <laughs> oh my god. This is the penultimate episode, so you know crazy shit's going down. Alright, I gotta remember to, to get the audio off. And we're off. Ba 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 ba. I, I like to not eat while the opening credits start, because then I usually eat all of it and there's nothing left for me to eat. That's the split. That's the split. This is King Viserys and Damon. That's definitely Damon. Out of the intro sequences, it's starting to get really confusing. That's Rhaenyra. No doubt about it. The best, the one true queen. Don't know who that is. By the way, I'm representing Team Black right now. Let's go. Bum bum bun an dun 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 Lord Corliss is severely injured. Is that one of the granddaughters?
He's implying that the Rhaenyra's children are bastards. Alicent is in charge more so than ever before. God damn it, I hate that woman. The fact that Rhaenyra wasn't able to have genuine children with Laenor is causing more problems in places we weren't even expecting. What is this, 127 hours? <laughs> It's a dragon's egg. So that's how dragons give birth. Interesting. I couldn't read what it said. She's pregnant. She's pregnant with Damon's child, no doubt about it. Jace all grown up. There's Damon. What's the situation with the marriage? Oh my god, I forgot one of them is named Joffrey.
So the king is not... The king is not well. And the queen is reigning in, instead. Mm, it kind of makes sense. But it shouldn't. This is where, she, yeah, this is, we have, we have three factions that have some serious problems. Rainis is going to want, Rainis is not going to want her kid to take over. So she might have to concede that to keep her on her side. That's the seven mark. The uh, the the gods of the seven. Shouldn't the king decide even if he's unwell? God damn. He looks awful.
What happened to his eye? Jesus Christ. Damon and him are supposed to be relatively in the same age. That must be Damon and there's kids. What sickness does he have? Jesus Christ, what is this woman doing to these people? What did that fucking asshole do? Which prince was it? I swear to God, it better. It, it was. It, I swear to God, it was Aegon. I swear to God. Don't trust her.
Oh my God. What is this tea? Is this the same thing that they're giving the king? Oh my god, it's 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 the it's plan B. It's the abortion thing. What a hypocrite. You enable your fucking monster of a son, and then you force people to get abortions. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Rhaenyra, you you treat her like shit. Jesus Christ, man. Fucking deserve more than that, fucking little monster. <laughs> oh. This is bullshit.
Handsome young men, Rhaenyra. Has made... Do these people ever age? Only King Vicera seems to age. Oh, it's him. Could he look more evil? I mean, really? She justifiably has deep hatred of Rhaenyra because she thinks that, that Rhaenyra murdered them.
Take it. Take the offer. Oh shit. My man, you better wake up. My man, you better wake up for this moment.
This motherfucker's trying to drug him out. Don't take it. Shut up. I hate you. I really do. Let's go. He stepped up when we needed him. Sit down, chump. Oh, my man, the king. Let's go. Ooh, fucked up your plans, didn't it? Yo, my man looking like a king with that mask on. Somebody help the man. God damn it. Should have taken that deal. Yo, he knows, he knows you a backstabber. Let's go.
Damon is a good man. I knew it the whole time. Take the deal. Oh my god. He's dead.
Oh my god. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. They're showing this on television? Even on HBO, I'm in disbelief. I really do feel bad for this woman. I wish she knew the truth about her son. I really do. And her granddaughters will continue the Valerian bloodline through Rhaenyra's bastard children. So not all is lost. That's a little awkward. <laughs> Didn't get your way again, did you? The king. Just when you need him, he shows up. I guess they're betrothed. They're sitting next to their future wives. The one he butchered? Oh, shit. Why is Otto there? He's not a member of the family. He's a backstabbing asshole. A toast. God bless. Shut up. Oh my God, I hate that guy. He's such a... Oh, he's a terrible human being. Somebody should castrate him. Done enough damage with that shriveled little shit.
Holy shit. Yeah, the alcoholic takes another swig. What you gonna do? <laughs> what you gonna do, boy?
Did she foreshadow that? She also said, beware the beast under the board. I, that's a foreshadowed thing because we know cause she can see the future. Oh, he's dancing with your wife. Why don't you go cheat on her again, scumbag? Don't you have a dragon to steal over there? Don't get too drunk. I really do feel terrible for this man. He's not a bad guy. He really isn't. Honestly, he's the best among them. I honestly, I hope... I hope this is the last memory he has of his family. A good one. He got offended over the pig. Mother f Oh! I was sent raining your children, the little shits. You shat them out. Flush them down the toilet. Get out. Yeah. Control your children. Oh shit, she's back.
She's the one that was with Damon in the very beginning. The one he claimed was pregnant, but actually was not. He's referring to Rhaenyra. What are you understanding? What are you taking from this? Don't tell me that she... In, listen, it's a... It, it, do not tell me that Alicent took what he said about Aegon, the Conqueror, the original one, to unite the realm, and she took it when, when he thought he was talking to Rhaenyra. When she's referring... When he is clearly referring to Rhaenyra needs to unite the realm. Do not tell me that Alicent, in all of her wisdom, took it as, as him saying... You have to unite the realm with your piece of shit, asshole son, Aegon, the, the monster. God damn it. Uh, 
All right, HBO. On to the um, inside the episode. And let me pause this. And the sneak peek for the next episode. Let me get set up real quick. Pop on over. Desktop audio on. Chrome capture on. YouTube. Let me switch over to the correct channel. Game of Thrones videos. Here we go. We're going to do inside the episode first, and then we are going to switch over to the preview. All right, here we go. The episode six time jump was to introduce Allison and Rhaenyra's children as young adults, and then this time jump was to make those young adults adults. So it was important to age them up again and recast again to get them up to the appropriate age. So they're all in the 17 to 21 age range across the span of both families. Nephews? As the years have gone by post Alison's outburst, Alison has found religion as a way to redeem herself. We know that Alison holds closely to the new religion of the Seven Gods, which is not something the Targaryens do. It's part of what sets her apart from the house that she married into. In the scene where Rhaenyra and Daemon return to King's Landing for the first time, they see a difference. And there were no words that were gonna describe the difference. There was nothing in particular that they would point out to us. We figured out how to make it read immediately. The big thing is a giant seven-pointed star that's hanging in the main hallway. Gordy, if you ask me. <laughs> I would say it's nice to be home, but I scarcely recognize it. It's become a much more quiet and conservative place. It's much more like a monastery now than it was. When we first saw it in episode one, it's full of light and life, and there's Targaryen erotica on the walls, dragon erotica, and now it's all been replaced with objects of the seven, and the murals have been covered up. Eight is essentially set in a hospice. The whole episode is essentially sitting by the bedside of a loved one who's dying. Father? <sighs> The high tower thought that they could just the come in. The tension of this episode take does over. not happen until Viserys shows up in that throne room, because the thinking when Rhaenyra is standing there is it's a farce. Corlys has been potentially fatally wounded. Nobody knows whether or not he's going to survive, so there's now a question mark about who's going to take on the Driftmark throne. It's within Alicent's motivation to want Lucerys to be deposed because it disempowers Rhaenyra's side of the family, and he's a bastard anyway, so what is he even doing there? And to give Vaemon power, because if Vaemon takes power, then he owes the Greens, and the Valerian fleet will all go with them. I do not understand why petitions are being heard over a settled succession. Vaemon, one of those guys who's not particularly likable, but he always tells the truth, and he can't help it, and he can't stop himself. For that reason, he's never really got very far in life. And yet, suddenly, in episode eight, he finds himself possibly in line to inherit the Driftmark throne. He also walks right into the midst of the contentious issue of Rhaenyra's children and their real father. Because he's a kind of a do-right guy and wants to always tell the truth, he misses just how strongly and heavily everybody feels about this. He knows that those children are not Valarian. They're white. They got brown hair. Very obvious. And everyone knows it. It's the pink elephant in the corner that nobody wants to talk about. But Vaiman is the one person who will talk about it and who will speak out about it. You may run your house as you see fit, but you will not decide the future of mine. This is something he's been holding on to for like 16 years. And when the petition goes completely sideways for him, he knows he's gonna fall on his sword, but I'm gonna fall on my sword my way. And my way is to tell the absolute truth. So even if nothing is done about it, everybody in this room will know her children. Thank <laughs> you. 
can't show that Maybe on he YouTube. He becomes actually kind of a sympathetic character in that moment. He goes out with a bit of honor. I have to say this. He did it from behind. Didn't come to me face, did he? Nah, mate. Couldn't do that. <laughs> he can keep his tongue. This is politics, this baby. All day, every day. The petitions demands that there's a family dinner and that we all sit and eat together. It's the Last Supper. It's Viserys' last stand. It's the father and daughter's story finding some sort of resolution and closure. Unexpectedly, there's a brief moment of, oh, maybe things are going to be OK. <sighs> yeah, until oh, the Greens goodness. come and fuck it all up. See you all tonight, together. One of the issues with his leadership through the series is a refusal to step up and intervene, to speak with clarity and to lay down the law and to stand by choices that he makes. For the first time, certainly in Rhaenyra's life, she really watches him do it. He stands by the family, both sides of the family, in this final dinner. It's like all this corruption and all this fighting. This is what it does. This is what being a king does. This is the effect of all of this on me. Why can't we just love each other? It sounds really naff, but it's like, why, why, why can't we just love each other? Why can't we just make this work? Let us no longer hold your feelings in our hearts. The crown cannot stand strong if the house of the dragon remains divided. But set aside your grievances Forget me as your king, just love me as the man that I am to you and your family. If not for the sake of the crown, and for the sake of this old man. Rhaenyra and Allison have always been trying to pull themselves back from the precipice. The idea is that they never really wanted to get into this rivalry together, but they were driven there by the patriarchy, by the men in their lives. And they have a real friendship and relationship and a real love for one another that might have gotten cold and stale over the years, but it did exist. And then as soon as Viserys leaves the room, the young kids who don't appreciate the history that has gone into this and what's at stake, kick it off again. His only purpose is to try his best to put the house right before he dies, which he feels like he does. Well, he does he actually. Doesn't. It's not his fault. This is a guy who it's was the unwilling children. to make enemies of one side to do what was right. So a lot of things in his life went unsaid because he was trying to always tamp down aggressions. And it leads to this final moment where his final message is unclear. He's very ill, he was in a lot of pain, they put him on medication, and he wakes up in that middle of the night trying to have this unfinished conversation that he had with Rhaenyra, not realizing that the woman sitting at his side is not Rhaenyra, but Allison. So he speaks to her as if she's Rhaenyra, and Allison picks out words like Aegon and Prince, who is promised, and prophecy, and, and whatever, and doesn't understand all the context going back into it because she never heard the Song of Ice and Fire because she was never his heir. Don't take milk of the poppy and then impart really important information just before you die. That's the learning curve on that one. <laughs> so it is a bit of a tragic end, but it goes to the idea that this prophecy is a bit of gossamer sliding through your fingers and it's hard to grasp all at once. And also his lack of dealing with the issues at hand at his court that he was responsible for during his life. I don't think he ever wanted to be king, it's a burden. He's just doing a duty. He was too human to be king. It was genuinely touching watching Paddy die multiple times from multiple different angles. Mm -hmm. When he takes his last breath, he maybe feels like he's done all he can and he's put his house right. He did his best. He kept this secret belief in the prophecy and kept that with him until the day he died. And that's all he could do. In some respects, he wasn't the right man for the job. But in history, he, he kind of was the right man for the job, you know, 200 years later. So he does have a legacy. Let me just say this right now, okay? Let me just say this right now, just in case anybody's confused, all right? Number one, um, this guy right here, no, not him, he's fine. No, she's she's actually fine. From the precipice. I have no problem with, with Ellicent. At this point, this motherfucker right here, he was the, he's the main problem in the previous episode with the dragon. 
And he is the main problem in this episode because apparently his little ego got ticked because of a pig. Of course, my question, I have, I have a theory actually about this pig, but he sees the pig and he, and, and then the other one chuckles and all of a sudden his little ego is bruised. How, how, how little of an ego can you possibly have to be that? You fucked everything up. Shitbird here. Okay. Mr. Pig fucked everything up again. So I said in the last episode and I'll say it again. Fuck him. Fuck him. I hate him. And what's it say? Okay. Then he, everybody knows he's being a little asshole about it. And then we jump Take. forward. Kick he's laughing. Get, get over it. <laughs> Oh, my feelings were hurt. You deserve to get punched. I, I bet he didn't see it coming either. He's and then this guy right here. Only purpose. This guy, the the Aegon, okay? Number one, I got major problems with him now. I got major problems with him now because the implication is that he is sexually assaulting people. Okay, that it's not that's not the implication. It's it's just blatantly implied, which makes Alicent the hypocrite because he, it, because of the Plan B situation. Okay, so that whole side of the family, the green children, are little monsters that need to be, except for the daughter, uh, that need to be obliterated. Fuck them. And I am curious about something, and I didn't hint at it. Uh, and and then this one over here, Alicent over here. Is like, oh, my my husband is drunk, not drunk. My husband is dying, borderline senile, and drugged up on belief. And you're telling me that she's gonna be like, I hear key words, um, uh, therefore I'm going to literally take nothing. I'm gonna take whatever I want to hear out of it, literally nothing that was said to me. Are you shitting me, bro? This one is dumber than a, than a sack of bricks. If she got the implication that. Mmm, the greens, I Not hate them so much. Allison, so he speaks to her as if... I hate them so much. The greens, I hate them so much. My man Patty deserved all, all the praise. That is another... Uh, Patty is the king. K Patty is the king of Whew. Um. All right, let's look at the episode preview. God damn it, I hate that... That... The greens. Ugh. Here we go. I think this is the last episode of the season, too, so... No, no, it's not 720p. We're going with full HD, baby. Let's go. The king is dead. I'm not liking that blade being shined. He told me he wished for Egon to be king. No, he didn't! The door remains shut until we finish our business. None can know who you are or what you seek. What of Rhaenyra? I found out something you should know. This is seizure! It is treason, at the least! Who is that? Who was that? Who was that running? That's the that's that's the that's Aegon. Have you never imagined yourself? That's Rhaenyra speaking. On the Iron Throne. Have you never imagined yourself on the Iron Throne? I don't know. I don't know who she's saying that to. Everybody's talking about episode eight. Nobody's really talking about episode nine. <laughs> yeah, everybody's only... But this is episode eight. I mean, this is the episode nine preview. Is this the final episode? I have to find this out. How... Oops. Where are my keys? How many episodes are in House of the Dragon? Seven. No, no, no. 
There's not seven. Ten. This is, there are ten episodes. Or, or are there nine? The first season will run for ten episodes. So this is the episode, ooh. Okay, so we have a little bit more ahead of us. Let's check Reddit. Let's check Reddit real quick. Actually, we're going to save that for another video. All right. Um, hopefully, uh, if you got through this, you're either watching this as the episode preview and inside the episode video, or you're watching this on the watch party of the episode. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Everybody's praising King Viserys, or and Patty, who, uh, who plays uh, King Viserys in the episode for being phenomenal, of which he very much was. And um, so episode 9 is the penultimate episode, which, if you aren't familiar with Game of Thrones, is always the episode where crazy shit pops off. I thought this was the penultimate episode, episode 8, and I was like, this is pretty big, but nothing, like, drastic happens. But uh, episode 8 was phenomenal. Period, end of story. It was phenomenal, and I think King Viserys went out like a real champion. He came in and saved everybody at the last moment. But, of course, Alicent had to obviously, uh, you know, read into words that li no one in their right minds would take... Well, I don't know. Um, but no one in their right minds would take what he said where he's dying, he's on his deathbed, he's in pain, and he's drugged up with milk of the poppy. She interpreted it that way. She is looking to hear whatever she wanted to hear. Why does this woman believe that this whole time he is pushing for Rhaenyra to be the heir? He is pushing for her to be queen. He says it thousands and thousands of times. And then all of a sudden, one broken up sentence while he is beyond drugged up. He didn't say it when he was when he was completely there. When he's beyond drugged up, he, he she hears what she wants to hear and destroys everything that he wanted. Unimaginably stupid. God damn it, the greens are the worst. Alicent is one thing. She is apparently dumb, but she is good in the sense that at least she swallowed her her her, her pride and her, you know, everything for, at the dinner party. It's her despicable, rotten, malicious children that are absolutely out of control. <sighs> and then in the, in, the, in the next episode, we clearly see that um, Alicent, I, I have no idea whose child this is. Uh, this might be Rainier's child or something like that. We, we now know that Alicent is acting instead of the king. The king is dead, so immediately Rhaenyra should be queen. That's the way it works. King dies, queen immediately, be uh, princess, the heir immediately becomes queen. There, there, there should be nothing else about it, okay? But apparently she's like, Aegon, he wants Aegon to be king. He wants Aegon, his shithead of a, of a son, to be king. My God in heaven. Oh, my goodness. All right, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Uh, what were, what are your theories? How do you feel about the episode? If you're watching this in the watch party, or if you're watching this strictly in the preview inside the episode thing, just let me know what you think is going to go, what is, what is going to happen going forward. What do you think of the inside of the episode and the preview? Leave all your thoughts in the comments down below. My goodness. Um, yeah. All right. I'll see you guys in the next one. Dracarys.